So come on into a comfortable space. Um, I'm going to start upright when I get back onto my mat. So, but as always, come into a, a place that is comfortable for your body this morning. So upright, legs crossed, legs extended, lying down, leaning against a wall, maybe whatever you have in your um, general vicinity that can allow you to find some ease in your physical body. Oh gosh, I'm aching this morning. All right. And so wherever that is for you, when you get to that place, take an inhale through the nose, a nice long exhale through the mouth. And just let everything start to settle. Start to watch the breath. Just let the inhale fill up and the exhale deplete it, deflating those organs. Just start to calm the physical body. Try to start to settle the thoughts. And just take a few rounds of breath, watching it, really focusing on it, trying to push aside anything else this morning. Your thoughts start to pick back up. Just come back to the breath. Let that be your focal point. That guide, steer, and hopefully tamper down some of the other thoughts swirling. Three more rounds of breath here, just watching it, easy pace, the natural, in and out. Okay, next inhale, sweep the arms high. Bring the palms together through to your heart center. Pause here. Set an intention or a focus. Dedication, maybe sending your thoughts and energies out towards somewhere or someone else. You can go ahead and release your hands whenever you're ready. Take another full breath in and out. And we'll start with some Kalabhati breathing this morning. That's the breath of fire. So it's the one I like to, to start with one hand sort of on your diaphragm. So between your ribs, or you could have it on your belly, or you could have two hands, either way. And so I'll demonstrate first, and then we'll do three rounds of it. So you inhale through the nose, and then you exhale through the nose with a little puff of air without... Um, forcing the lungs to refill, they'll refill on their own. So you're really focusing on the output of the breath. So it's inhale, and then the. And with your hand in your center, it just helps me gauge the pace and a little bit of the um, level of the breath. So we're gonna take um, 30 rounds of the exhale and then pause, and then we'll take another round, and we'll do three rounds all together. So again, you can have two hands or one hand, whatever's comfortable for you. You can keep your eyes closed if that's comfortable. So let's start by taking an inhale, and an open mouth exhale, and then go ahead and inhale, and begin.
Take an inhale. Mouth, exhale. We'll take another round. Inhale through the nose. And then exhale, begin. Inhale. I'm a little closer. I'm not sure if you can hear the breath. Sometimes it helps. Exhale. And we'll do one more round when you're ready. Inhale. And begin. Inhale. Open mouth, exhale, and then just come back to your natural pace of breath, in and out through the nose, let it settle back. And keep your eyes closed for another round or two of breath. You might feel a little lightheaded, your heart rate might be a little elevated, both of those things are normal with that type of breath. It brings a lot more oxygen to the brain and to the body in a short amount of time. So just let everything settle back down. Come back into your natural pace of breath. And then with your next inhale, sweep the arms overhead. And then exhale, bring them through to your heart center and just come up onto your knees. So you can either roll over, ankles and knees, or However is easy for you. Come on to um, a padded surface if this is a comfortable for your knees. Inhale, both arms high. And then with the right fingertips, grab the left wrist. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, just take an easy bend over to the right. Really try to feel that left rib cage lifting up and over a little bit. You can push the, the left hips out to the side a little bit if that helps you get a little bit more expansion through the side body use an inhale to come back up to center switch the grip grip sorry take an inhale lift up and exhale take it over to the left trying to keep your heart shining forward so not down toward the earth breathing make sure you're not holding the breath here use another inhale to come back up and then release the hands to the lower back. We'll take a little heart opener here. So bringing the shoulder blades together first. You can bring them up a little bit if that helps and then bring them together. As if you're, you're squeezing you know, that tennis ball between your shoulder blades, so that type of feeling. And then try to send the, the shoulder blades down your back a little bit. As you lift from the heart center, keep the hands on the lower back for support to make sure that you're not just dropping back. You wanna be lifting up. And let your gaze just kind of settle straight ahead or it can float up toward the sky. Sometimes looking up helps that thought of everything moving in the upward direction. Keep the shoulder blades squeezing, just really starting to open up through the front of the body. Pectorals, chest muscles. Take another inhale. And then exhale, come back to center and just guide your hips back to your heels. Come back into a child's pose, knees together. You can start with your fingertips forward in an extended pose. Forehead to the earth, rounding through the spine and sending all the breath to the back body. You can bring the hands back to the heels if that's more comfortable either way. Take one more full breath here. And then from here, come right up into your cat. So keep that rounding through the spine as you come up onto your table. And you can just readjust for your hands and knees a little bit wider. But keep into that rounded spine, your, your angry cat pose. So really grounding through the palms and lifting, letting the gaze just settle down putting a, a little bit of space between each of the vertebrae on the back. Take another breath in. And then as you exhale, just gently reverse that and come into your cow, dropping the heart, lifting the tail. 
bring your gaze toward the front edge of your mat, continuing to ground through the palms. So there, even though your heart is dropping, there's a little lift forward and lifting of the tail. So you get that beautiful C shape. Take another breath here. In and out. And then go ahead and reverse. Come back into your cat. Dropping the tail. Dropping the crown. So just taking our, our cat cows a little bit slower this morning and really feeling each pose, taking a few breaths in each direction instead of just sort of a half a breath like we normally do. And then go ahead and come back into your cow. Just letting the body settle in here. Take another breath and then come to your neutral table. So after that sort of exaggerated, um, lengthy breath in each half of the pose, now coming into your neutral table, feel the core engage, the lower ribs knitting together. Gaze can be right between your palms, right between your thumbs, really. The fingers are spread wide. And just finding your breath there while you're engaging that core, Take another inhale, and then let's come into a downward dog. So tuck your toes, lift the hips, and come on up, and just walk this out a little bit. And again, this can be one breath or half a breath on each side. Take your time, lengthen through the back of each leg, ground through the palms so there's still energy in the, in the hands, the fingertips, all the way up the arm. Even though we're moving the feet and kind of focusing more on the lower body, make sure there's that energy that starts from the hands. Take each side one more time. And then come back down to your table. Come back into your neutral table. So you might just read. Adjust your palms so that they're underneath your shoulders. Again, make sure that your shoulders aren't over your wrist. Always make sure that when you're in your table here that you're balanced. You should be able to close your eyes and just take a breath or two here. Just feeling the ease, the strength here. And then let's bring a little bit of um, length here to us. So step the left toes back, bring the right fingertips forward. creating some length through the spine. So before we lift the back toes, let's make sure that you can feel all five corners of your foot, of your toes, sorry, all five toes, so that that hip is squaring. If any of you have a block, that's always kind of a, a nice way to, to judge. You can see if, if you can balance it there, because if you start to open up, well, I guess maybe it's still staying there. <laughs> I have a sticky block. But you guys get the idea. So you want to have the hips squaring, send the right fingertips forward, Engage through the core. Again, make sure there's no sagging there. So really make sure those abdominal muscles are engaged. When you're ready, lift the back toes, flex that heel. Reach the fingertips forward, reach the heel back. Let the gaze just settle toward the front edge of your mat and keep the breath full. Take another inhale and lengthen. And then as you exhale, round and bring the elbow and knee toward one another. Take another inhale here, engaging. Exhale, lengthen everything out, making sure you don't drop back into the arch, but keeping it nice and strong. Inhale, bring it in together. Exhale, send it long. Inhale, one more time, bring everything in. Three, two, one. Exhale, lengthen everything out. Pause here for another breath or bend that left knee. Reach around with the right hand, grab the top of the foot of that ankle. And just come into a, a gentle heart opener here, grounding through that left palm, lifting from the heart. And take one more breath in, and then gently release and come back to your length. Inhale and exhale, bring everything down. Send the hips back to your heels, bring the hands back by your heels as well, and just come into your child's pose there.
Take another full breath. And then come back up to your table. Come all the way back up to your downward facing dog. So lifting the hips. Just come back in and take another, another few breaths walking this out. Or if you prefer, just come into stillness. And take a few breaths here, really lifting the hips toward the sky and dropping the heels toward the earth so you get the maximum lengthening through the backs of the legs. And take another full breath. And then go ahead and drop the knees, come on back down to your table. We'll take the other side. So take the left fingertips forward, step the right toes back. Find all five toes, squaring that hip down. Grounding through that right palm, lengthening each direction. When you're ready, lift the back foot. If you want, flex through that heel. Whoops. And make sure you're engaging through your center, keeping those muscles, keeping the breath flowing. Take another breath and lengthen everything in each direction. Inhale. And then as you exhale this time, Round everything in, elbow to knee, rounding through the spine. <clears throat> Whoops. Inhale, lengthen everything over the back. Exhale, round into the center. Inhale, lengthen. And one more time, round everything in. This time, hold for three, for two, for one, and then lengthen everything back out. Pause right here or bring the toes back down or bend that right knee, reach around with that left hand, grab the top of the foot of the ankle, come into your heart opener. Take one more breath here and then gently release back to your length in each direction. Inhale and exhale, release everything down. Send the hips back to the heels. You can keep the fingertips extended or you can bring them back by your, by your heels as well. So we're in our child's pose. Take one more full breath. And then come on back forward. Let's make our way back into our downward dog. Hips to the sky, heels toward the earth. Grounding through the palms. And then step your feet together. Maybe a little bit further back. I was in a little bit of a shorter dog, so depending where you were in yours, step the back a little bit further. And then inhale, take the right leg to the sky. Keep the hips square to start and just float it up. Just create as much length as you can in the standing leg and also in the lifted leg. Take another breath. And then as you exhale, release it. You can tap it back by that foot and then bring it all the way forward between your hands. Drop the back knee and let's come up into a low lunge. So this first lunge, you wanna just ease your body into it. So you can start with your hands up on top of your knees or at your waist, if any of you have blocks. That's a great support here or fingertips. So you, you know your body, how it's feeling this morning. So you find the place to start, to start to lengthen that left hip flexor, grounding it through that right heel. So there's energy coming through that right side, helping to keep the hips square. Softening the shoulders down your back. If your hands are on your knee or on your waist, just make sure that the, the shoulders stay heavy. It's easy for them to, to scrunch up. If you want um, a little bit more here, you can always take the arms high into more of a Anjani Asana. But for the first lunge, that might be a little bit more than you want to do. So keep them on your, on your knee or keep them on the earth. We're going to take three more breaths. So if you do have your arms up high, take one more inhale with them there. And then together, everyone, bring your hands inside that right foot. Heel to the right foot, just a little closer to the right edge of the mat. So you have enough room inside there. Keep that right shoulder and right knee connected. So it's just nice and vertical. Try to keep a little bit lift through the heart so that you're not really, you know, like rounding down toward the earth. Soften as much as you can through the lower body. I'm just getting even more length through that right left hip flexor and that right outer hip. I'll take another breath here. 
And then let that knee just kind of drop away a little bit. See if you can let it drop away with keeping your foot still flat for right now. Just take a breath or two. And just feel how that changes where you feel your body opening. Then turn your toes out a little bit to one or two o'clock and roll onto the outer edge of that foot. And let the knee drop open even more to your degree. You can bring a tiny bit of movement to this, a little bit side to side. And if you want to add the twist, go ahead and bring that right hand onto the right knee. Some of you are already there. And go ahead and just turn your heart to the right. Bring that right shoulder blade onto your back. If you want to add the quad stretch, you can reach back for that right hand and just take a gentle stretch through that left quadricep. Let's take two more breaths wherever you are. If you have the quad, then gently release that. And then everybody release, walk your hands all the way over to the left and just come on up to a wide-legged fold. So toes in, heels out. Take an inhale and come to fingertips. And really find that length through the spine. And then exhale and just drop into your fold. Drop the crown of the head. You can keep your hands right where they are under your gaze or you can walk them wide to the outer edges of your feet or your big toes. Lifting the tailbone to the sky, the crown of the head to the earth, and just settling in. And take another full breath here. And then bring the fingertips back underneath the gaze. Inhale, lift halfway. And then turn your heels in and toes out. And we're going to come down into like a skandasana. So you might need to widen your feet a tiny bit. Bend the right knee and you can lift those left toes. Bending that left inner thigh and hamstring. You could keep that left foot grounded and just keep your fingertips on the earth as well. Or you can extend them out to the side. So a couple different variations here. And then go ahead and bring it over to the left. So bending that left knee and again, either grounding that right foot or maybe you turn those right toes toward the sky. Hands can be on the earth or you can extend them long. We're just gonna take a few breaths on each side here. Come on back to the right side. And you can move this any which way. If you feel like you wanna take it in each direction on the breath, go for that. And if you like taking an extra like a longer breath on each side, then stay there. Just kind of move this in a way that feels good to your body and your breath this morning. Extending the arms obviously brings a little bit more strength to the pose. And then just make sure that you've done both sides equally. And then come back to center. Bring the hands back underneath. And then pivot back toward the front of your mat. So the right foot was in front. Come back into your low lunge. Drop the back knee. And then let's heel toe the right foot to the right edge of the mat and drop the knee coming into a half pigeon. So alternatively, you can come onto your back and cross right ankle over left knee. You can reach the hands through, interlace around that knee, flexing the right foot for support there. If you're forward facing, maybe you bring the hands to either side of the hips to lift them and try to square them a little bit more. Or maybe you have something under that right hip to help it stay square. Most of our bodies can't do that on our own. A block sometimes is a little too um, hard. A sweatshirt or a pillow or a blanket sometimes can be good. And then just walk your hands forward to your degree. Maybe you come down to forearms or maybe you stay up tall today. We're going to stay for a few breaths, so find a place where you can be easeful in your body and in your breath and find a little bit of comfort. For some, that might feel crazy to find comfort in this pose. For others, I know you're settling in and we could stay here for a while. So just find some breath, some softness.
you're on your back, try to make sure your shoulders can stay a little bit heavy, even though they're interlaced around the knee or around the leg. Consciously bring a little bit of weight to them. Stay for about five or six more breaths. So really fill the lungs, take some deep breaths here. I'll take one more deep, full breath. Inhale, nice long exhale. And then slowly start to come out of the pose. So walking your hands back. And if you're in forward facing, let's come into a downward facing dog. So tuck the back toes and lift the hips. You can bring that right foot straight back or some of you might wanna let it float up to a three-legged dog. If you're on your back, you can just uncross and rock and roll your way forward and come into your downward facing dog. We'll all meet here. Just taking a few breaths. Again, lifting the hips, dropping the heels, elongating through the backs of the legs. And then taking the inhale, lift the right leg high. This time, let it open up. You can stack that right hip. You can bend the knee if you want. Take another breath in. And then exhale, release, and you can tap it down or step it forward between those hands, step the back foot in a few inches and come into your pyramid pose. So maybe heel toe the right foot a little closer to the right edge of the mat, grounding through both heels. So you wanna make sure that that left foot feels nice and grounded. And then maybe you have blocks here, you come to fingertips, inhale, guide that right hip back just a little bit more, lift from the heart and elongate through the spine, and then exhale, come back into your fold with a little bit more length throughout the whole body. Again, breathing into the whole back of that right leg. Take another full breath. And then inhale, come back to fingertips or to your blocks. Come back to your length. And with your left hand on the earth, either palm or fist or tented fingertips, bring the right hand to that right hip crease and start to revolve your triangle twisting open to the right. So guiding that right hip back a little bit, keep grounded through both heels, maybe the right fingertips float high. The gaze could be anywhere to the right or up at those fingers. I'm trying to twist the heart open. Take another breath in. And then exhale, release that down. And let's step both feet back to our downward facing dog, or you can always come down to child's pose. Take a few breaths here. And then if you're in your uh, child's, come back to your downward dog. And together, let's inhale the left leg. This time, just float it up. So flex through that lifted leg and try to ground that right heel. It's not gonna to touch, but try to let it get a little bit heavier. And just lengthen everything up to your degree. Take another breath in, and then exhale, release it. Maybe tap it next to the right, and then step it all the way forward. Between your hands, drop the back knee, and we'll come into our little lunge on the left. So again, starting here, maybe you start up high, hands at the waist, or hands on the top of that left leg, or maybe you send the arms high today. You can also cactus them, lots of options here. Maybe even interlace them on the lower back, get a little more heart opener. 
I'm just starting to find that length on the right side and finding whatever arm variation, maybe this cactus arm today helps you open up more through the chest. Maybe you just send them high. Make sure that left knee stays stacked over the left ankle, it doesn't go ahead of it. Let's take another full breath in and then exhale, release both hands down inside that left foot, coming into our lizard, staying nice and tall, um, elongated through the spine, so leading with the heart, keeping that shoulder and elbow connected to start. We'll take another full breath here. And then while keeping that foot, the left foot grounded, just let that knee come away a little bit. And just notice where, how you feel the, the openness change a little bit. Don't force anything. So if your body doesn't naturally want to let it come open, then don't. But without actively trying to keep that knee connected, if you relax the muscles, it's probably going to come away from that shoulder just a little bit. Then go ahead and turn the toes open, roll onto the outer edge will give you a lot more freedom through that hip. And then just come into that a little bit. You can come down to forearms if that gives you more. Take a few breaths here. So if you want to add the twist, bring that left hand to the top, leading with the heart, grounding through that right palm. If you want to add the quad stretch, go ahead and bend gently, moving that whole leg toward your lower body. Let's all take one more full breath in. And if you're in the quad stretch, gently releasing it. Bring both hands around and then again we'll walk everything over to the right this time coming back into our wide-legged fold toes in heels out to start inhale lengthen so come to fingertips find as much length through the spine before you come back down into your fold really sending the tailbone to the sky crown of the head toward the earth And then inhale, come to fingertips, bring your hands into your hip crease and come all the way up to stand. And then let's come into an arm bind. So bring the hands, you can either interlace the fingertips, you can grab opposite elbow, maybe take reverse namaste. Whatever helps you get the most open, whatever is the most comfortable. Take an inhale, lead with the heart, and then as you exhale, come back down into your fold. Create a strap is a fantastic or a, a towel, anything you have to elongate the arms, get more out of the shoulders. We'll take another full breath. And we'll go ahead and release the hands, heel to the or heel, yeah, heel to the feet, maybe just the once in so that you have a little bit shorter stance and then we're going to bend the knees, drop the hips and come into our goddess pose. So bring the hands together at the heart center to start. Really just let the hips drop straight down, stay nice and tall through the spine. Just take a few breaths here, just engaging, of course, through the legs, settling in and finding that openness through the hip, the groin, the inner thigh. Take another breath in. And then release the hands to the tops of the legs and hinge yourself forward a little bit. Maybe you drop a little deeper into the hips as well. And we'll get that shoulder stretch. Drop the left shoulder and take a, a gentle twist to the right. Rounding through the heels here. So making sure your toes aren't scrunched. And then inhale back through center. Take the other side. Drop the right shoulder. Twist it to the left. We'll take each side one more time. Come back through center. Take it to the right. 
Inhale through center, take it to the left. And then inhale, come back to center, come back into your goddess, take a breath in, and then come all the way up and turn your toes back into the original formation, toes and heels out. Bring the hands to the hip and just lead with the heart as you come back down into your fold. And then walk the hands toward the front of the mat, pivot the, the left foot back to the front and the left and the back, sorry. Um, now I have to remember where we went from here. Let's drop the back knee. But oh, we came into half pigeon. So let's heel toe that left foot over to the right edge of the mat and come into our half pigeon. So either dropping that left knee or crossing left ankle over right knee on your back, threading the arms through and interlacing around the top of that right knee. Again, maybe something under that left hip. I only have a block here and that's a little more than I want, but usually any kind of rolled up shirt, sweatshirt or blanket is a, a nice um, option underneath. Pillow, let's see if that works. Yeah, the pillow is much more forgiving than the block. So find a place where you can find ease and comfort here. Maybe come down to your forearms, maybe come down further, let the head rest. If you're on your back, try and let the shoulders stay nice and heavy. About five more breaths here. your fish. Exhale. Slowly start to come out of the pose. If you're in your forward facing version, tuck the back toes and lift the hips and you can step that left foot back or you can float it high. If you're on your back, just uncross and rock and roll yourself forward. Coming back into your downward facing dog. We'll all meet in our downward dog and just take a breath or two here. Maybe walking out. And then with your next inhale, take the left leg high. Exhale it forward. Step the back foot in a few inches, coming into pyramid on the left. So maybe you take that left hand and the left hip crease and guide the hip back a little bit, trying to help keep the hips square. Come to fingertips or blocks and inhale, lengthen through the spine and then exhale, drop the crown of the head, release into your fold, soften as much as you can. Try to ground through both heels. Take another full breath. And then inhale, come back to your fingertips, come back to lengthening through the spine. And with the right hand, either on the earth or a block or fingertips or fist, left hand to the left hip crease to help guide it as you twist open, revolving your triangle to the left. The left hand can stay on the back of that hip or it can float up to the sky. Take another full breath. 
and exhale, release. Let's walk the hands back toward uh, the right, coming back into a shorter wide-legged fold. And then this time, turn your heels in, toes out. So your heels are just about hips width. And then bend the knees and drop the hips, come down into your malasana squat. So if you have a block or even a pillow, anything that you want to help support underneath the pillow, it's going to have to be pretty tall for that to help support. <laughs> but a block is a good thing. Bring the hands together at the heart. You can use your elbows to guide your knees a little bit wider, but try to stay really tall through the spine. As lifted as you can here. So grounding down through the heels, dropping the pelvis, lifting the crown and the heart, and maybe just let the eyes close here. And settle into a few deep breaths. This pose is uncomfortable, doesn't work for you. Come all the way down to the mat and you can come into a bound angle. Bring the soles of the feet together um, as an alternative. If you're okay being here, we're gonna add a twist. So bringing the left hand down, open the right fingertips to the sky and just try to twist the, the whole torso, your rib cage and your heart to the right. Take a few breaths. If you want to add a little bit more, you can bring that right hand to a half bind. Bring that hand to the lower back. If you want to try for the full bind, take that left hand, palm toward the back of the room, and then try to wrap it around that left leg. And then as you bend the elbow, you're going to reach for those right fingertips. If you have the fingertips or grab a strap or um, just maybe the back of your clothing here, and try to lift your heart just a little bit so you create a little bit more length through the spine. Another full breath. And then if you do have any formation of that bind, go ahead and release and come back to center. Bring the hands back to your heart center and just pause here, take another full breath. And then we'll take the twist on the other side. So start by dropping that right shoulder, right hand to the earth and left fingertips to the sky. So the more you can drop that right shoulder, the more you'll be able to sort of open the rib cage and the heart to the left. You can either stay right here if you want to take any part of that, the bound version, you can start with the left hand and then bring that right hand around. Try to reach for those fingertips. All the while, keep grounding through the heels, dropping the pelvis, lifting the heart. Take one more breath in, and then gently release whatever part of the bind you might have. Come back to center. Take one more full breath here. And then you can bring your hands down in front or behind and just come all the way down. And we're going to come onto our belly. So just sort of make your way, extending the legs long, and come all the way onto your belly. So it should feel really good to just lengthen out through the hip flexors there. Come on into a sphinx pose to start. So elbows underneath the shoulders, fingertips spread forward and spread wide. Make sure the tops of the thighs and tops of the feet are nice and grounded so the feet aren't rolled in or out. And then gently press down through the elbows, lift the belly button and lift the heart. Bring your gaze forward just a little bit. Feel the whole front of the body lengthening. Take another full breath here. And then go ahead and gently release everything down. Bring the arms by your sides and turn one cheek. Take a nice deep breath in and out. And then turn the opposite cheek. Again, full breath in and out. And then we'll come into a locust pose. So coming back, making sure the, the thighs are squaring. We'll start by interlacing the hands on the lower back. When you're ready, inhale, lift the toes. Send the knuckles to the back of the room. Squeeze the shoulder blades together and lift the heart. And bring everything up for five, four, three, two. One more inhale, and then gently release everything down. Turn one cheek or come back to the first side. We'll come back up 
into another um, version of locust pose. You can take the same arm variation. You can open the arms like airplane or pistol lock them forward to the front of the room. If you want to practice bow, if you practice bow, you can bend the knees, grab the tops of the feet or the ankles, and set everything high. Again, lifting up for five, four, three, two, one more inhale, and gently release everything down. Come back to the second side of the cheek, let everything rest, take a nice deep breath in. Open mouth, exhale, and gently windshield wiper the feet or just sway the hips side to side. And then bringing the hands by the heart, gently make your way back to a child's pose, nice and slowly, rounding through the spine, hips heavy to the heels, forehead to the earth. You can keep your fingertips extended for a little bit more length and bring them back by your heels. Find that release through the lower back. And take another breath here. Let's go ahead and just shift the weight to one side, one to the right side, head to the left. Bring the legs out in front. Come on into a staff pose. So legs extended long, heels are flexed, toes pointing toward the sky. Inhale both arms high. Lengthen and then leading with the heart, come down to your fold, bending your knees as much as you need anywhere along the way. So maybe you start with the legs bent, bring the hands down, and then maybe you slowly start to lengthen the feet out. Dropping the gaze and just taking a few deep breaths here into the backs of the legs and the whole back body. And inhale, come on back up. We'll come into a seated twist. So let's keep the left leg long. You can bend the right and either bring it inside that right knee or maybe cross it over. Maybe you bend that lower leg as well. So you can find whatever version is most comfortable for you. And then start to twist your whole torso to the right. Bring the right hand behind for support. Send the left fingertips high. Inhale and lengthen. And then exhale. Take your twist to the right elbow. Can come inside that knee or you can grab around outside it. But try to stay as tall through the spine as you can. Grounded through the sit bones. Breathing fully here. Take one more full breath. And then gently release, come back through center, extend both legs long and just give them a little shake. And then bring the right, the sole of the right foot into the inner right thigh. We're coming to a John Yashirsasana first and then we'll take our twist on the other side. So inhale, both arms high, and then exhale, just a, a tiny twist of the torso. So as you exhale, you come down over that left leg. Maybe you take that right hand to the outer edge of the right uh, left foot and turn your heart open a little bit. So add a little bit of a twist here. You can take the left hand behind or even send it. Take one more full breath. And then come on back up. Extend the right leg long and then we'll bend to the left and either bring it inside, you can cross it over, you can bend the lower leg. Whatever allows you to sit tall, lengthen through the spine, right fingertips high, left hand behind for support. Inhale and exhale, come into your twist. Nice 
find your best to stay as tall through the spine as you can with each inhale. Take another full breath in. So release back through center. If you are bound up like I am, extend your legs, extend the right leg long, and then sole of the left foot to the inner right thigh. And just bring that right leg just off center a little bit. Inhale both arms high, lengthen, and exhale, release over that left leg. Uh, right leg, sorry. Maybe take the left hand to the outer edge of that right foot and add a little bit of a twist, turning your heart to the right. One more full breath here. And then release, come on back. Send both legs long. So turn back to swim like that. And just slowly make your way down. You can um, come down using your core in a nice slow, maybe we'll do a 10 count today. So make sure you have enough room on your mat so that when you come all the way down, so start where you're, you can bring your toes up or you can keep them down, but start where there's engagement. And then we'll go from there, 10, nine, eight, slowly opening a little bit more, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and come all the way down. Inhale, open mouth, exhale, and just let your whole body settle here onto your mat. We're gonna take a brief inversion before our Shavasana, so you can hug your knees into your chest, give them a nice squeeze, and then send your feet high. If you practice shoulder stand and prefer to come there, go ahead, otherwise legs up, or scoot yourself over to the wall. If you want to come into shoulder stand, you can come on through plow first, come high on your shoulders, and send the legs high. I'll take about eight breaths in whichever version. You're in shoulder stand. Start to come back through. Take a breath or two in your plow. Keeping your hands on the lower back for support. Starting to make your way out. You can reverse that into your fish pose, hands underneath the hips, forearms on the earth, and lifting the heart, drop the head back, reverse that cervical curve. Another full breath in. And then come on down. If you're in your legs up, come on back onto your back and you can hug the knees into the chest for one last squeeze. If you want to take a spinal twist, you can take a, a few breaths on each side. We just did some twisting, so you might feel run out there already, but otherwise come on to the right side, knees to the right, gaze to the left, and take three deep breaths. They try to let the body start to soften. Use an inhale to come back to center. And then take the knees to the left, gaze to the right, right arm out like a wing. Three deep breaths. Come back. Here for your Shavasana, extending everything long. Heels to the corners of the mat, arms maybe a little bit further away from your body, like a nice five pointed star. Take an inhale through the nose. Open mouth, exhale. And do that again if you need. Whatever helps your physical body start to soften and melt, relax, dissolve. 
Any other words you can think of to help conjure that feeling? Let your face soften, your jaw relax. Back into your easy pace of breath, watching the inhale, watching the exhale. Start to bring some awareness back to your breath, to your physical body. Some gentle movements to your fingers and toes. And then with your next inhale, lengthen. Overhead, stretch everything out. With the exhale, hug everything in. Squeeze the knees in tight. And just drop the knees to one side. Pause there. Take another deep, full breath. And when you're ready, make your way back up to a comfortable seat. And bring the hands to our heart center. And just take the next breath or two to bring back to mind your intention, your focus, or dedication. Breathe it in, and as you exhale it out, try to share it with others along your way, and let's honor those thoughts by bringing our hands to our crown, to our throats honoring our words, and our hearts honoring our souls, and those of each other in the light that shines in each one of us. Namaste. Thanks, everybody. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste.